Okay, um, ne next flying in a tie, just sort of staying with the theme of flies for uh, European nymphing, particularly for Czech and Polish. Uh, I'm going to tie a fly that I call the Prospector, and again, it's called a Prospector because it's down, it's deep, and it's dirty. You're, you're trying to find the fish, and that's the whole idea of this again, is to keep it down near the bottom. Uh, so the, fl the hook I'm going to use for this one is the Hannock again competition, the H400. It's uh, barbless, size 10. Uh, they do make these hooks with the uh, curved up uh, point on them too, so again, I think it's a 450 if you want the curved up point. That was a 400 BL. 400 BL, yes. Uh, for the bead to match up with this size, I'm going to use a 3.8 millimeter, or if you've got the Canadian Lamb or other ones, uh, four four millimeters. What you're going to find this this brand here, I use also. It's uh, what is it? W Winger Chic uh, Flies. It's a Canadian or American company. Again, it's a decent bead, but to be quite honest with you, when you compare these to Canadian Lama. Canadian lamb, it doesn't have as big of a cavity, so you don't have that big hole that's going to uh, sort of take away from the, the weight of the, the bead itself. So if you're ever looking to try to compare beads, just, just look. In this case, this is a slotted bead. Um, I don't know if you can see on there, but basically the slot itself, some of them, they make them a little bit too big, so you do lose some of the weight to them. So again, this is where uh, having the ability to have a scale and weigh them, you can actually see how more effective uh, the beads themselves can be. So I'm just going to secure it here in the vise. And one thing you'll notice if you're using slotted beads is the way the slot is, you could actually have it on upside down or the right way up. In most cases, if you put it on upside down with the slot, it's not going to actually pivot and swing over. But if you actually have the slot the way it's designed, you'll see how it actually slides over and offsets from the hook shank a bit better than a normal way. The advantage of these also is that in some cases you're going to have your bead further away from the hook points. So you've got a wider, uh, wider gap, so it's not going to interfere with a good hook set. So once we have the bead on here, I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to use the uh, the lead uh, sheeting. Uh, I just pre-cut a few up to save some time for this part of it. You could use a uh, wire if, if that's your uh, preferred method. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, but I do recommend if you're going to use wire on these. Uh, Put a bit of super glue on with it too, so it's going to help to lock it down and avoid spinning on you. So once you have your sticky back off it, the same same method. Just take the uh, the lead sheeting, stick it on further back, maybe not quite at the bend, but a little bit ahead of it. Wind it forward again towards the bead. Make sure your bead is sitting the right way before you get the lead, and pull it tight to it, and then start bringing it back again. And again, I'm going to bring it forward, just trying to get that nice sort of taper ahead of time. Whenever I'm tying nymphs, I'd rather have the taper done ahead of time rather than trying to do it out of material because you build more bulk. You may as well have more weight underneath it rather than relying on bulk to uh, give you that profile. Uh, for the tail, I'm just going to use pheasant tail fibers, natural again. Uh, and I'm going to take off six of these fibers, just cut them down near the uh, stem. And then just pull them, just, just double check, make sure they're aligned. And I'm just going to set those aside for now. Um, what you're going to do for the thread on the a, a fly of this size here, again, six odd is typical for this. If you're going to go finer, you may want to go down to eight, but this pattern overall has got a lot of dressing that you can bury the thread underneath. So I'm going to use a six odd, and I'm going with the, the fire orange, the fluorescent orange. And again, I'm going to try to achieve a few hot spots on this pattern. Now, this pattern has been very successful for me using it for competition angling. Um, it's one that uh, incorporates a lot of different principles of trying to make a pattern attractive for the fish. So I'm just going to wrap this back, securing again all the lead down, and again I'm going to give it a little bit of an orange tag. You don't want to bring this too far down because if you hook a fish you're going to have a hard time for that hook actually to move and embed on a bit of an angle if you're playing at certain angles. So I want to try and keep it away from any area where the, the, the mouth of the, the trout is going to be affecting it. So again, so I've got it just back up to where it just starts to level out. I'm just going to take the uh, pheasant tail and hold it across the back. Just a standard type tail that you use for any of your nymphs. Uh, typically you do it maybe one, one times or, or one and a half at the most, the width of the gap, just to keep it looking proportional. 
I just sort of stand back and look at it, what I want to see compared to the body more so. I'd rather have it be uh, maybe maybe uh, half or, or a little bit more of the length of the body. And again, just trying to go for what the natural look like. I just brought it forward. Now I'm bringing it back over again just to try and get a, a bit more of a consistent taper here at this point. For the, uh, for the ribbing of this pattern, I'm going to use a red uh, copper wire. Size of this is size small, uh, number 33, according to, I believe this is uni. And I'm just going to secure this uh, on the bottom. Sorry, I just got to tighten this up. So I'm just going to secure the wire along the bottom and bring my thread back towards the rear. For the shell backing, I'm using a, a product here that I believe this is Superfly, if I'm not mistaken, who sells this. But it's just basically a dark brown flash uh, backing material. It's got a bit of a pearl effect to it too. You can use those uh, braided ones that I showed you earlier, but just in case you can't get a hold of it, you can use just a standard type uh, scud backing it if, if that's all you have available to you. Uh, for this pattern, I prefer to use brown, just being that I'm going to use a copper dubbing for the body. It just gives it a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to pull that back and just leave it sitting here. For the body material, abdomen, I'm going to use this product that's called uh, Diamond Dub Rusty Brown. It's getting a little bit harder to find, but it's Superfly sells this. Uh, if you look at a label on it, it says a great Canadian dubbing company, but Superfly distributes it. it and it's, says pardon me? It no longer says that. It doesn't, okay. But, it, but basically what it is, it's a very coppery looking dubbing. Those of you who fish uh, a lot of nymphs have probably heard of the Copper John. The Copper John is a very effective uh, pattern. For us as competition anglers, it's actually banned because of the design of it. It's got too much in the way of lead wrapping, so they consider it to be an external weight, which we're banned from using. We can only use a single bead. So uh, to try and get around it, what I've used is, is a copper type dubbing. I honestly, honestly think the Copper John is effective for two reasons. One, the amount of weight to it, how it gets down, the slickness of the body but also the coppery effect, uh, color, trout seem to love that, whether they're rainbows or browns. So I'm just going to take a pinch of this off and again uh, lick my fingers wherever my little cork board guy is here and just roll a bit on here and uh, bring it up towards the shank of the hook. Just give it one or two turns just to get it locked on and again I'm just going to spin it around the actual thread itself and bring it forward just making a nice thin profile on it. Once I get up to the point where the uh, lead stops, I'm just going to secure it here and, and wrap it off. And again it gives it a very uh, a very visible effect in the water. The copper colors on this they sparkle and just give it a real nice sort of a, a glow. So I'm going to pull my shell backing over the top secure that down and then pull it back and trim it off and with this pattern too like many of them you're going to have a bit of a collar up here that's going to help to bury it so again with this material here I always prefer to just throw a half hitch in at this point because sometimes if something goes wrong it's going to mess it up especially when you're using a rotary feature on a vise so I'm going to bring the ribbing forward just giving it a bit of space uh, equal sort of uh, amount of wraps that gives that segmentation again, the, the look on it. Nice thing with a rotary vise, as I said, you can actually see both sides so you can get a bit of an idea. Unfortunately, the lighting here is not perfect for, uh, for me to see this. So I'm going to bring it around and again, I'm gonna, just going to do the overhand wrap on the, the wire itself so it's going to lock that down. And just by doing that simple wrap over top. Like I said, it's very rare that my ribbing actually comes undone. A little trick you can do here, since you already have a slot in the top of the bead, when you have that little piece of wire you've trimmed, just push it down inside of that slot and it's completely out of the way and you don't have to worry about it affecting anything else in your tying or cutting your thread. So again, so you got the tail, you got the body. For the, uh, for the actual uh, collar on this one here, I use a variety of different materials. One that's really easy for you to find is Stillwater uh, Solutions. They've got uh, the Dark Summer Duck. It makes it an excellent collar material. It's got long fibers in it so you can kind of brush them out. really gives it that buggy, leggy look. 
Um, for this one here, though, what I'm going to use is a product. It's from uh, Seaman Limited. Uh, some of you guys, someone had mentioned they've been buying stuff from them, but if you can ever get a hold of this, it's a uh, it's artificial peacock dubbing. It's uh, code number is 07 UV Green. Highly recommend if you're going to order anything from this guy, get a bunch of this stuff here. It just makes a real nice dubbing if you want to try and make peacock bodies with dubbing. Uh, plus, it's got a bit of UV in it. If, if you can't find it, uh, the other thing you can do is actually just mix dubbing into the, or UV dubbing into your other dubbings to give it that little pop that it gives. So again, just in, for those of you who might want to see that. And the same thing with this, I'm just going to wrap this around here. Um, you can use a dubbing loop if you want. I personally prefer it to actually come undone a little bit. I think some of these patterns, when you actually put the dubbing on them for a collar, when they start to actually come out and they kind of give it that more of a halo effect over top of it, I think it looks a little more attractive to the fish. So again, so I'm just going to pull that over top and quickly finish this off with a half hitch. And again, swinging it around, locking it. As you can see, the thread was originally coming towards me. It's actually on the bottom by the time it's locked out. So again, that's why it's important to actually spend that time and, and manipulate it a bit at the end just before you actually tie it off. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a, a thread than I normally would at the top. And again, this is just going to give it a little bit of a, a little hot spot at the front of the fly. But this fly here, as I said, it's been very, very effective for me. I've used it all over the place. Uh, used it in Norway this past summer. Caught, caught lots of trout on it, uh, brown trout there. But uh, I've used it in, uh, used this in uh, Colorado quite a bit and used this uh, similar version of this in New Zealand. And very, very effective. Now what you can do, if you've got a, a brush, which I forgot mine, I've just got a piece of Velcro here, but you can actually just turn it upside down and again, another advantage of using a rotary feature on your vise, you can actually see what you're doing, but try to brush a bit of that copper out of it and just kind of let the fibers go loose on it and a bit of that, the collar too. Just kind of pull it back. If you see any real super long strands, pick them off. But what it does, when it's in the water, moving through the water, it gives a real nice glow, but that little bit of a contrast with the, with the collar on it just makes it look very appealing and again the hot spots with the uh, collar and the tail on it can uh, make a big difference at times.